Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Yeah, that's a silver $10 coin. Yeah, solid chunk of silver right there. I've got a little help today from Jason. Hey, Jason. Hi. Um, uh, he's putting together some boxes for me and then we will start loading up some stuff for donation. And Melissa is peeking. I'm peeking at the books. Looking at the books. Um, We'll do a book run, a book donation run fairly soon. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the first things we have to do kind of today is to bag up a whole bunch of clothes in, yeah. into, uh, we'll probably use the blue recycling bags wherever they are. I have a bag of bags around here somewhere. Oh, it's right there. Um, because we are donating these to our Ukrainian refugee friends who uh, they don't have a lot of winter clothes or clothes in general, having just moved here. And there's a lot of good sweaters and things that could be reused. So. It's kind of nice knowing the people it's going to. Um, though I'm going to work while you guys are boxing up boxes and Melissa's... <laughs> you almost sat down. I saw that. Uh, I'm going to work on bagging up clothes. Found this inside one of the jackets. Um, it's a Louis Vuitton. I thought, well, is it a gift card? Uh, no, it's kind of a receipt. It looks like somewhere... There's a Louis Vuitton wallet that he paid $845 for. Don't know where that is, but um, it's kind of interesting to know that he was buying some high-end stuff, which means we might have to have a really good look at the clothing because if he was shopping at the Louis Vuitton store, maybe there's other high-end stuff in the mix here too. Been clearing clothes out of the room. Jason's given me a hand. And this was underneath the pile. I thought, oh, it's a box for a cassette deck, like a modern one. Um, and then I looked it up and it was heavy. And it's still in there, brand new. So there, there's a brand new pile audio cassette deck, which is definitely like an audiophile kind of thing because really nobody uses cassette or hardly anybody uses cassette anymore. But really, really nifty. Well, Jason has found several bags, four entire bagfuls of new and next to new clothing that actually fit him and will work. Um, and Melissa is going through the pantry. I've, uh, of course I found food containers, but there's an air purifier back here. It's uh, brand new in the box. Hold on. Oh wait, brand new? Yeah. Like. Oh, Germ Guardian. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you want me to take that out? And then uh, if we get that out, then, because you're trying to get to the bin back there, right? It looks like there's a lot of reason. Okay. I'm surprised by how much stuff is brand new or or nearly new and very usable. Like most of the food you said still hasn't expired, right? No, so we can use them. Yeah, us or the food bank. I I can see you did not load up on the sockeye salmon. <laughs> Melissa hates fish. Um There's something. I don't know what it is. Like a Oh, maybe it's a Oh, okay, like an old microwave, maybe? No, it looks like a toaster oven. Oh, toaster oven, okay. All right. Well, let's get this load of stuff uh, back home, and then we'll come back again, and I'll load up on... There's, uh, what are they called? Like the rolly dollies, you know, like the... Oh, yeah, four-wheel doll, furniture dolly. There's four furniture dollies. Well, good, we'll or, probably... Sorry, two. We're going to need those for moving the furniture out. Yeah. Cool. Took the garbage down with Jason and um, starting to get a little bit more room in the closet. But some of the things are cool, like this 1940s, it's a curling sweater, Pemina Curling Club. That's pretty nifty. And of course, this old um, Kenora Camping Corps jacket, which is, you know, probably from the 60s or 70s. It was made in Winnipeg, so it's not exactly new. Um, but something that I thought was neat, and I saw there was a certificate on the wall saying he flew on a Concorde. This is a British Airways bag, but if you look inside of it, British Airways Concorde. So 
that's got to be a pretty rare piece. If you flew on a Concorde, you got, look, there's like a, a Concorde tie. There's all the little booklets on the Concorde. Somebody who's into aviation collectibles is going to think that's really, really neat. I mean, I'm not, I like aviation stuff. I'm not super into it, but I think this is really cool. It's a whole bunch of paraphernalia from Concorde Airplane. Obviously, uh, you know, not many people got to fly on a Concorde. Really, really nifty thing. Too bad they didn't stick with that supersonic sort of uh, flight from uh, North America to uh, England. But uh, they were really expensive, the tickets. But you get there in like a couple hours, I think. Really great idea. Anyway, very neat collectible piece right there. Some of the uh, clothes in the closet are really cool, like jerseys, whether it's soccer or hockey. Uh, he was definitely a jersey. There's baseball. Definitely a fan of all sports. I could see that. This was in the mix too. It's a, uh, it, it's, uh, he bought it at Graceland, it says, and it's uh, Elvis Presley's Sun Record shirt. I would wear, I would wear the polyester out of that shirt if, if it was my size. It's a double extra large. I could aspire to wear that size, um, but it wouldn't fit me right now. Um, this is kind of cool though. This is a, uh, it's a Hawaiian shirt, which you might be thinking, yeah, okay, it's a Hawaiian shirt, but look, it's Jimmy Buffett. Um, so it was a tour shirt, shirt from 2006, not to be confused with Warren Buffett. If I ever had a chance to interview Warren Buffett, I'd be like, what's the deal with the parrots? <laughs> but, uh, he must've gone to a Jimmy Buffett concert and you got a, uh, Hawaiian shirt, which is actually kind of neat. Um, so yeah, just finding some interesting stuff in the clothing category. I was, uh, I was, as I was digging and I got to the back of the closet, there's a couple things. There's this little little painting of a flower back there uh but there was this and, it was, and i played a game called is it a 22 or is it a pool cue um and as i discovered it was a pool cue like a professional elite fiberglass pool cue uh which is good for us because we actually have a pool table at home so uh the pool cues that came with our table were pretty unspectacular so that can come to the house today and then there it is there's your hand crank gramophone right there the one i saw earlier getting down to the stuff i'm waiting for a part for my truck which means i've been transporting stuff in my car it is packed right up to the roof um all what i'm doing today is uh, or what i'm doing today is hauling a bunch of the good clean used clothing I'm going to a homeless shelter. We're going to drop this off. There's really good downfilled winter parkas. There's pants, pretty much everything a person would need. Um, so we'll give a big donation of clothing. There must be hundreds and hundreds of items of clothing here. Be able to help a lot of folks that are living rough out there this year. Parka, maybe not for summer, but uh, will certainly come in handy come winter time. Well, I'm off to a homeless shelter to drop off clothes and I'll get back to sorting and cleaning. I just dropped off my donation at the shelter. They were grateful for it, which is great because they can use it, uh, but they were shocked. They actually brought people out. They said, how did you fit all this in your car? Because it was an absolute mountain, an absolute mountain of clothing that I dropped off. <laughs> they couldn't believe that it all fit in a car. It was like uh, probably one of my normal pickup truck loads. But clothes are squishy and uh, I'm on a mission today. <laughs> I'm gonna go back start loading up some of the books and the DVDs and things and uh, bring them back because apparently they take that kind of stuff too. So more donations today. I have started getting the books packed up and it's a pretty diverse selection of stuff. There's cookbooks in the cooking section. There's antique uh, fiction books. Uh, there's even a book all about auctions. Ironically, it might get auctioned off. There's the magic of the tarot book about John Deere tractors, all kinds of neat and wonderful things. So I'm trying to separate the, uh, the books out that I think would sell. Uh, and then we've got, you know, the I auto autobiography of A.A. A. Milne. It'd be nice if it was signed by him. Of course, the author of Winnie the Pooh. But 1939 is an early, early pressing of that. So basically just kind of going through everything and trying to figure out 
where stuff should end up, um, whether it's going to go to auction, whether it's going to go to charity. And the things that are going to charity, um, we took a big load already today to the homeless shelter. All the books are going to uh, another charitable organization that helps uh, house people who have recently been homeless. Uh, they will give them books and furniture and stuff as they're donated. So we'll give them a nice little library of books over there too. Um, so starting to get stuff like that shelf cleared out, but there's still so much more to do. Um, I'm going to pack up a few more boxes and kind of get the stuff ready to go. So when uh, we're going to have a, the charity is going to come here and pick the furniture up this time. Uh, so I have to make sure that the shelves are all cleared off and ready to go. But it doesn't look like it, but I've already hauled probably several truckloads of stuff out of here. This uh, little condo was a lot more full than I expected. I also love that he had a sense of humor. Look at this. Table reserved at this bar for a grumpy old man at 2. Or better yet, this one reserved for 3 p.m. for Lincoln, Roosevelt, and Washington. I wonder if the uh, server knew what they were on to. <laughs> You'd hope so. But that makes me smile just getting to know this gentleman. Oh, getting the kitchen cleaned up. I found a piece of bread. It's a little bit solidified. But it does tell us pretty much an exact date of, unfortunately, when this gentleman passed away. Sometime around February 16th were the last groceries and when that corner of the cob which i've since thrown out has been gone you know clearing out a house like this you eventually just paint the portrait of a person's life and ultimately their end uh it's just the way things go but we're gonna get cleaned up uh, i'm gonna go through the kitchen get garbage thrown away and um hopefully make a little bit of a dent in here i think it's also time for the christmas village to come down one last look at how he had it set up with the town hall, little shops, the cafe, and all the little winter snow here, and it looks like everything was lit up. Very cute little display, and obviously he loved Christmas. We're gonna get this packed up so we can start getting the, uh, well, basically everything's gotta move out, so time to get packed up. I have been amongst all this stuff for so long that I can't even really tell what I've done <laughs> I mean Christmas Village is gone the bookcases are almost emptied out uh, any books for donation and I'm starting to make a pile there for the charity that's going to be coming um, let's see what have I done in the other rooms let's go have a look cleaned up the bathtub got all the old clothes and stuff out of there cleaned up the counter a little bit uh, in the office been cleaning out some of the uh, personal papers they told me to toss them they didn't want them so those are going to go any antique sort of law books I'll probably be able to sell uh, so really just kind of going through and getting things cleaned up there's still so much um, this feels like almost as big of a job as a very very full house I guess it is a pretty full house um, and I have not done much in the bedroom yet at all what I'm doing right now um, I've taken as much garbage as I probably should for today and I'm kind of gathering things and putting them in my car that Melissa mentioned she might want me to bring home. Such as this little duck set. Don't ask me why. She said, that's awesome. I feel like we need that in our lives. And so this silly thing is coming home. Uh, she also liked these lamps. She said it looked like a big palm leaf kind of around the bottom. She thought they looked good. Um, I might bring those home today. At some point, this uh, Dyson fan is going to come home. But honestly, it's 40 degrees Celsius in here. Um, so I might leave that on for a little while. Melissa didn't ask for it. But she's she likes gnomes because it reminds her of her German grandfather <laughs> who used to have gnomes in the garden. That might, might make sort of a fun Christmas ornament. I'll probably bring that home to her as a seasonal decoration. Um, as for the plants, look, they're actually starting... You see, they're starting to stand up a little bit. That one, maybe not so much. But these two are perking up. They're not completely dead. Um, so I gave them a little plant food, gave them some more water today. I'm going to keep on watering them and see if we can save those things. Um, you know, several months of not being watered and neglect, not great for plant, but it's surprising that they survived as they did. I feel like I have to keep them alive somehow. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to try. For now, though, I got to go load up my car stuff to take home 
was getting some of the garbage thrown out from in the pantry. I mean, I'm just doing little rounds here and there. And I thought I saw at the top a little familiar face staring back at me. Let's see if I can reach him. See what else is up there too. Uh, what is that? Cooking fuel? Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut, who is a uh, contest back in the, I think it was the 1930s, that a child actually came up with the idea of the Mr. Peanut character. Um, it was a promotional tool, and then they have having peanut mobiles that drove all around. So they just recently retired. They looked on the road for 70 years. But that's a cool little Mr. Peanut. I don't, oh, I think the peanuts are still in there. This came out quite some time ago, but it's cool. It's a little Mr. Peanut cookie jar or peanut jar and a collectible ceramic piece still wrapped up in the plastic. Nice little find for on top of the pantry. Filled up more bags with garbage. My donation pile is getting big. I'm actually going to give this chair to Patrick. I got to dust it off a little bit, but he said, I, know, I want a comfy chair. And I said, I got a remote control one that you can have. So my friend Patrick's going to get that. Uh, moved the TV downstairs, uh, got that out of the way. I am going to take, um, this soapstone is one of the better pieces on site. Oh, there's an alarm clock up there. That is one of the better pieces. So I do want to get that out of here fairly soon. And uh, moving the table and the carpet and stuff out of the way gave me access to this corner where I see there's an antique stained glass window but it's been so warm in here that the lead has gone soft from it leaning and it's taken on sort of a warped look. So I might be able to lay it flat. It might straighten itself out. Uh, what do we have here? Some sort of cloth bags. Oh, that one's heavy. Sounds like money. Yep. I found the secret money stash. One bag of money. Two bags of money. That's an antique dish. Being used to store coins in, I guess. We've got pennies. Probably a little convertible top of one of those die cast cars. And well, it's not small change. I mean, well, I mean, it's literally small changes. Dimes, quarters, nickels, silvery stuff. Okay. I wonder if there's anything else hidden back here. Well, we got a whole pile. I would probably say like a few hundred dollars worth of coins in this one corner, at least. Anyway, more rolling to do, but it's always fun to find stuff like that. Well, I'm sure this, holy cow. <laughs> I'm sure that won't look conspicuous, me walking down the street towards my car. Holy shnikes. That is a heavy sack of cash. Um, <laughs> I can honestly say this is the first time I've legitimately found a money bag full of cash in a house. Um, bit of a surprise there. I mean, I've been in this house for like a, almost a week now. Didn't even look in that corner and uh, we have this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I am gonna keep peeking in this corner though because this might be where the good stuff was hidden. We'll find out. Okay, I've got to walk down through the parkade in the elevator with this thing and try not to draw attention to myself. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay, well there is a, a box full of something. Oh I see. Look, 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 look. These are all uh, proof and uh, mint sets. We've got one. We've got two. There's a, a big box of them, guys. A big box. I don't know if it's all coins, but I might have just hit the mother load here. Holy cow. Okay. Churchill tobacco card set. These are all silver, it's all coins. It is an entire coin collection. Silver dollars, box coin sets, a hockey puck with a coin in it, why not? Uh, and then we've got fancy Royal Canadian Mint. 
Okay, let's see what's in here. And then you've got these little coin books. And they're full. I found a coin collection. Yep, silver uh, specimen set. Whoa, that is a nice find for today. That's a very nice find. Okay, got the coins emptied out of the box. Don't think I see anything. Oh yeah, there was another one in there. Is, but is there anything behind it like in that? There's a hole. Check out the couch. Nope. Okay, well, there's another cupboard over here. I don't know if I looked in. That actually just has CDs in it. Okay, I'm gonna have to check very carefully around here now that I know that there's little stashes of money kind of hidden. I just came up here for the carvings to take these home. Ended up finding a big bag of money. Not so bad. So shelf, which I'm gonna take over to Patrick in a little while, moved it out of the way and behind the shelf was this it's a porcelain enamel john deere advertising sign now it is a replica but still it's made in the old-fashioned way with sort of that glass porcelain enameled uh, image on the the steel and it's in great shape so nice little find also where is it you can see my piles of stuff are well frankly piling up again i saw this over here oof and I have a feeling that this was intended to be... Oh, I'm going to go through the kitchen with the shelf. Away. I started cleaning the stove. This is... Don't worry, it's not ADD showing. I'm just showing you as I go. Started cleaning the top. Had to actually use like a razor blade and stuff to get to clean the front. Oh, that's another story. I'll get to that in a bit. There we go. While I'm walking here. So this, I think, was probably picked up to be a replacement for that but obviously it's not the right size you can see someone has bent out all the little flanges trying to make it work this is an aladdin style lamp and it would have had a much taller chimney on it uh than that which is just your traditional sort of uh lantern glass but um you know somebody can do something with that <laughs> it's a vegas statement of the day but it's true all right Bags of garbage piling up pretty much everywhere. But I've got to get this uh, shelf taken down here before too long. I should do that right now. Let me go put that in the, in the vehicle. I've got Melissa's car today, so I've got a little bit more room.